Sorry. Basically, our today's topic is uh, looking into the coding guidelines for Python. Um, so, Python, what do you mean by coding guideline? It basically uh, talks about, uh, you know, in our case, right? How we going to lay out our code? Um, how can we, you know, uh, do indentation, new lines? Uh, and how we can, you know, structure our code in terms of where you can put the classes, constructor, where you put the constant methods, etc. How you arrange our import, okay? Along with that, it talks about naming convention. Uh, means how we're going to give the names of different classes, methods, constraints, or file names. Uh, each of them can be given in a different uh, casing style or naming uh, style. We can use the uh, camel casing, right? We can use snakes casing, and other cases are also available. So when we actually code, we are not only coding for ourselves, but we are coding for the other developer as well. So they can understand, read, easily can understand, and also they can you know find it easier for extend it further. So make our code consistent. Uh, we need to be uh, have to agree upon a set of guidelines or recommendation that you're going to follow when you're going to write our code. Be it uh, whether we're going to be use spaces, tabs, etc. Okay, how we're going to be handling exceptions. All of these things are normally mentioned in a coding guideline. And also there are like base practices that we should follow when you're doing the code. And this coding guideline for Python specific, okay? So this will apply to any Python file that we're going to be writing. So as a part of Python enhancement uh, proposals uh, by the community, they have suggested few uh, well-known you know, guidelines which are available in the Python community. It's a part of PIP. So one of the three key Python classes, uh, PIPs are PIP8. That talks about generic uh, style guide for Python code. Then you have the coding guideline for Python, which is known as the PIP20, which talks about a few of the best practices we can be followed. Next is that when we code, we also need to lift their documentation so others can understand what is the purpose of the code, right? What is that particular method does or class does? What is that particular module actually perform? Okay, so that document convention talks about. And also Google uh, has published well-renowned uh, coding style for different languages. There are also Google style guides are available. So let us look into one of the coding guidelines and understand what constitute a particular coding guideline. So first popular one is the PIP8. Okay. So this has been uh, created by the community. What they are talking about is the code layout. For example, what should be the maximum lines? Uh, whether they want to use indentation for tab and space. How going to be putting a line break? Okay, whether your source file should have a line um, break at the end. Whether you going to be where you going to place the imports? Okay, and how you going to put the string codes, right? And how you going to give spaces to expressions, statements, if, else, block? Where you going to put the spaces there? And also, where are you going to put a comment, inline comment, documentation, string, block string, and naming convention about uh, what names we can use, uh, how we can name our classes, how we can name our modules, how we can name our variables, how we name our exceptions, how we name global variable, how we name constants, how should we name the functions and method argument, method names. So all these things are defined. And also, how can you use annotation that will be provided? So this is uh, is the PIP eight. So PIP eight is talking about as you can see, it's talking about how we can put alignment uh, after open delimiter. Uh, so basically, it's uh, preferable to use four spaces 
distinguish argument so here i can you know uh, put argument in a single line but also what i can do i can put arguments in each of the lines separately or at least whatever it makes sense for me so i can easily by looking into the code i can understand how many arguments have been passed into it. so there are different style which is they are recommending this is a good way but this doesn't mean you code not going to compile or you not going to able to run what is again the purpose is that your code is eligible for you when you are coming back to your code after a certain time we can easily look and easily find out okay this are the variables and there right and also it talks about okay what is the wrong way of putting those right so so basically these are basically guidelines they should be following then it's talking about how going to put uh, spaces right when you're doing it and how we can do it for list array etc so maximum line length this is recommended in 79 but i prefer to use uh, 120 as a standard uh, maximum line so in a line how many character you put unless you create a new tag and put that right so that is what you can do in terms of number of lines that is there okay and that is that is there so that means when you have like a multiple lines and here we can see with so we can use a slash and then we can move to the next line line breaks uh, etc so we can you know look into this uh, this convention that are there what is the correct way of import that each import should come in its own separate line there should not be you know combining them together also when you are importing from a module then uh, then you can have like a multiple values or variable or class or function you are doing then you can have them in the same line in your cases or if you are you have like a module and then you have like a sub module so this way you can go about while importing so that's a kind of what this is in talking about and also another important thing is that uh, how we going to put uh, strings with documentation that is another important thing so uh i think that there is like a specific convention for documentation etc but documentation is very important uh and there is like a specific pip for document styling that you can see in the pip is 557 so it specifically talk about document string convention uh we can have like a one line document string document strings and normal uh, comment is talking about is the difference is that here you can you know comment so after the end of the first line right you can put three uh, quotes and that takes as a like a documentation that you are putting out here this this describes what is this particular function does and that should be coming after uh, your first line of your method it doesn't does anything without this your code compile everything works fine but still uh, you need to put documentation so others and you can understand why you are using that right okay and uh, you can like uh, also have like a multiple line of documentation so uh, if you wanted to explain different things right you wanted to explain what is the individual arguments is doing so you can you know put those details in a separate line so when you going to see this it is make more sense and documentation uh, can also talk about how we going to do the indentation as well another way of documentation is you can put uh, our normal comment and then put the documentation you can put lines and you can have like a inline documentation like what is the following piece of code is doing that you can also mention and really this is the recommendation that we normally use that is the first line or second line or multi line of documentation and then after that you can put your documentation so this is good we can uh, read about this we can understand about this and also there will be like another bit that is important that is the coding uh, guideline in terms of when is saying that okay this is uh, not explicitly saying uh, much but it is saying what are the good recommendation you should uh, always format your code make it beautiful you going to look into the tools that can be used 
always be uh, explicit in terms of your variable names and others. Now don't put cryptic names like x, y, z, etc. Tell what is this variable, what is this function, what is this class is what. Use the extra character. It doesn't uh, problematic. Okay. Okay. Uh, then it's uh, talk about uh, readability. Obviously improves your code understanding. And other thing is like uh, error should not be you know catch and consume. It should be also propagate to the higher level. So just just put tie except the catch the error and print it doesn't make sense, right? And it basically talks about the good practices you should always use uh, in terms of coding. It don't don't give explicitly uh, what is right set of code, what is wrong set of code. Again, these rules are uh, basically good to have, but it is very uh, useful so that we each other can understand each other code. And uh, let us look into that, how we can use tools with Visual Studio Code, and also how can you use those tools from the command line itself. So there are a few linting codes are there which are based on the pip8, or there are like good enough linting tools which are there in terms of what you can use, right? So we're going to talk about three tools um, that we can use. One is the PyLint. What are linters? Linters are basically additional uh, program that you can run. You can run the linter on your own. You can also integrate the linter with your ID. So when you code, the linter gives you the feedback. Okay, uh, this is here you are using a space. Maybe this is not required. You should be uh, give the proper variable name, right? Your casing that you have chosen for your class is not correct as per the coding standard. And each linter is follows one of the specifications that is there or any other specification they provide. So generally, uh, normally we can, uh, sorry, uh, here it is just file lint. So here you can put pip install pylint, and uh, then after pylint you can you know target a particular class, a Python file, and you put pylint dot uh, file name, and that will run that. Also, you can configure that what this uh, linter is basically having a certain rules, right? And you can choose to ignore certain rules. You choose to ignore certain file. For example, you don't want the linter to be uh, working on your code. Cases or linter should not be looking into the pi under underscore pi cache files, right? Those can be we can skip. So generally, this linter when it runs is basically looking not only for code styling that is categorized under C. It also recommended uh, refactoring where it makes sense. Okay, so we can make our code much more easier to maintain. It also gives us uh, warnings. Okay. Also, it provides errors which can indicate the bugs, okay? And also fatal errors. Um, that is uh, maybe there in the code, which is uh, cannot be posted the particular code. So let's look into that. How can I do this billing? So I have just a sample application. So in this sample application, what I need to do, first let me showcase the application code out here. So this is like a sample code. A sample Python code, it has a class, it has a method, it has a constructor, etc. Some statements. By looking into the code, I cannot make sense like what is wrong, what is right, right, out of this in terms of coding style or coding convention that we are following, right? So, what I can do, I can, you know, go to the command form and I can, I can start installing the linter. Already, I have like a virtual environment that is created. So, I just want to be always put my package, little package inside that. So, here it is. Uh, just let me do source. Okay. Let's see. And then with my virtual environment now. And then I can do simply pip install file. 
So I've already installed, so it's not going to be installing here. But what you can do, I can, you know, from this very simple code, I will just write the plint. Okay. So it is already previously resolved. So that is not there. So let me just simply write, uh, run this linter on the code to analyze the code and see if there is any error is there or not. So I put plint and then I put sample.py. And then the sample.py does work. If sample.py is basically now uh, is a file which will be analyzed by the plinter. And plinter shows me different errors, right? And it also gives, if you can see the errors, as you mentioned, they are categorized under different sections, right? So here we can see they have coming with a, a particular name and then they are you know, coming up with a particular code number, okay? So they are saying that, okay, in the line number sample pi 10.0, right? They have a trailing white space. So if you go to the line number 10.0, there's like some trailing white spaces there, right? So we can remove that. Okay. And then again, but other thing is saying that again, the same thing is the line number 12. I have certain white spaces. I can remove that. I can remove this as well. Okay. Later, I can again analyze the code and see is missing the class doc string, right? So it is also looking into the document styling, right? So let me add the doc string out here. So I can do something like this. And then yes. The documentation I put. So let's take and run and see whether this uh, reduces the number of errors. And also, you can see at the end of it, right, when you're running this, you're getting your code quality metrics as well with the second rating. So here, my code is so badly formatted that I got a rating of minus 22.86 out of 10. So 10 plus positive 10 number is that best you can get and the more negative you are getting for each of the problems you want to be having uh, bad code so that means one of the measures you can take in your code convention uh, how good you have written the code but this is like a sample code whether this program uh, works or not we can check we can simply put python and say sample.py so again, it says that, okay, it's inconsistent, tab error, etc. has been reported. So then I can, you know, make the minimal changes. And uh, I need to fix the other tab, etc. Before it can, I can even run the code. Okay, so let me remove the tab out here. And let's see whether I can even run the code or not. Again, it's talking about line number eight. Uh, there is a problem with the tabs. If I just say and as long as if there is like a problem with caps, then obviously the code will not compile and code will not run. There is like a indentation space after this line, so which line this is there. Unindented doesn't match any other. In Sorry, at line number 11. Uh, it's talking about line number 11, right? 11 also. Means 11, the function is not indented. Okay. So we can, you know, indent that particular function and we can also indent that particular line as well. Okay. So let's see. Does it allow me to run that? So, but it's still uh, reporting. Do not mention the order indentation level. Okay. So we can check that. What the problem we may have. Okay, anyhow. So we get the idea, right? Uh, that if you can write like a bad line of code, even I cannot you know, compile my code also. Now let's uh, try to run that particular file um, again. 
and see what is the score I am getting right now. The pilot is already reported uh, the errors that is there, and again it it throws an error because my code is so much unintended that it's not able to run. So we can see that it is not able to analyze the code. Okay. So if the indentation is not correct, let me try to use space. Instead of like, let me try to use tab. Okay. Should not have any space in between, right? And if it is not in. Let's see whether it's able to analyze it quite well or not. Okay, still same problem. Okay, so let me try to remove this method for now. I'll try to see this again. Maybe I can remove the dog stream for now also. Let me try to put this, try to comment this, and let's see whether it is the error out there or not. Whether it's a problem with the top string also, we can check. Otherwise, I don't see any other issues. So, did I get question? No. It's again for thing error to eleven. I don't know. What is going to be the issue? Okay. Maybe I try to open up in the user studio code and see what is the issue that is there. Okay. So in the Visual Studio code, right, I can see that there are like specific inconsistent use of tab and spaces in these classes, right? And also I can see here it is for saying about inconsistent tab for this. So how I configure this so I can, you know, view the error that are there that I can find out, okay? So let me try to create another class. I just simply put my class pi, okay? And in this class, I can simply put class Next class, and put a table under one. Okay. This class doesn't have any error, right? Um, but it has some other issues related to the documentation stream, right? So let me try to put some doc stream out here. Maybe I can try to put the doc stream in a single line. Class, okay, and that taken care of. The, there is no issue. So if I want, I can even run that on the newer class. So finally, then I'm going to give my class dot py. Let's see whether it throws up any error there or not. Okay, now it throws an error. Obviously, now we are only saying the missing module doc string okay so you are missing the module doc string there is too few public methods okay that is another issue that is there and then there is a final new line is missing at the line number four so i can we can go ahead and add this new line and i can add my documentation for And again, I can go back and I see that now here, instead of having a negative value, I'm getting a zero value, but I need to see if I can get a positive values that are there. Okay, now we see more a positive value. Now, only thing is that, that my class doesn't have a public method. Okay, at least it's expecting two public method to be present. So if I can add something like If self and the self can also be 
So maybe let's, I have a method called sum, okay? I just simply uh, return number one plus number two. I can always have uh, self there. Okay. Again, uh, if I run this now, it will again going to be complaining about too few uh, public methods that have been there and also it's uh, talking about some of the white spaces that have been missed again. So again, when I write in code, again my code rating has been uh, decreased, right? And as I've given methods, so I should be given the uh, method name, right? Method level document string. Done. And also, there are like additional errors in terms of indentation being reported. So, that is also been reported. And also, I want you to see this to be there that you can you know, currently see, right? We say too few public methods, right? That is there, that is coming from the Pintel end, right? And then uh, it is coming from the another model that is the document style, py document style. And there is talking about black line content white spaces. So this is like a white space that is there. I don't require it. And then as we are saving it, it's automatically you know going in and you know reporting that if there is still any other problem that is there. That is when we reporting, and then I can you know fix that if I want to, and then I can again run. But instead of doing this running from my local codes, right? Every time I can do, I can you know kind of doing this on my code. So what I can do, I can integrate with the Visual Studio code. So in the Visual Studio code, if you want to do any kind of changes to your settings, what you need to key combination you need to type is a Control Shift P. And then in the control shift P, you have the option to, as you see previously, we can select the interpreter and also we can select the linter, right? Which linter are going to be using. So here I can, you know, try to, uh, you know, disable all the linter that is there, or I can choose a specific linter to be there. So let me, you know, disable the linter for now. As I disable the linter, now what happens in the hours? I don't see any, you know, error message being reported. So where is this particular setting store? It's setting store under VS Studio, then under settings. Under settings, here you can see the rating has been false. You can make it uh, true. If I wanted to only the pink later to be true and other later for now to be false, so I can also do that. And also for later specific, I can you know choose to enable the using configuration, different switches that I can enable as per the documentation there are. I can ignore certain rules. I can also change the maximum line that is there. I can, so different uh, rules are there. I can ignore certain files, file path with the certain patterns. Okay. So now again, I'm seeing the errors, but I'm seeing the errors related to the, our file editor. Okay. So file editor is telling white space. That is the issue. That is, you can see out here. Particularly when my indentation goes off, it's cleaner as well. So that means uh, your uh, file inter, right? So similarly, now if I wanted to check uh, other thing with the uh, Flicker 8. So what is the Flicker 8 does? It uh, basically does is that it uh, combined my Flicker, uh, Pi Flicker module and Tip 8 module or Pi style module, which is actually implemented in the Pi bin together. So here again, I have to install, pip install Flicker 8. 
and the flake 8, then I have to put the sample.py. Now then on the flake 8, all I have to do is uh, flake 8 sample.py. And then I can run this in the command prompt. I can see the errors and I try to uh, get buffer values, right? And it's talk about that I'm using inconsistent. So I'll just move to the class that is I have written, that is my class, that is I'm able to run. And in class, it can also review that. Okay. Now here in the file enter, what you find is that, okay, uh, no leave line at the end of the file, right? So I have to add a new line. I have a black line consisting of white space that has been reported. And there is like a uh, expected two blank line, but found one. So this is also much more verbose. And let me much more information what I need to do. So I can you know also remove this. I can add a couple of blank lines out here. And here I can also enable the same way. I can go in and I can enable the filter that's a configuration and that will give me a uh, report the issue that I required okay and then I can add a new line that is required okay now here we can see both the flicker as as we are working with the files as I save it is automatically start reporting the issues right so and when I you know uh, put it uh, it says uh, which is like a uh, uh, few public methods that is mentioned and also like uh, and it's also you know talking about where the spacing is missing what is something else has been missing that has been it is also pointing out so I can see the issues that are there too many blank lines that is coming from Flickr so I can remove one of the blank lines and then Flickr can again analyze my code and it talks about like what is the issue is so after a certain period of time, I can see what is the issue that have been reported out there. Okay. So maybe I can remove this, and then I can see what is the issue that is there. Okay. That been done. Uh, and other things I think we can do is the next one is I can you can run the filter on my play it on my particular file, right? And then it uh, explicitly says, right, the too many black lines that is already reported, expected two blank lines, but found one. Okay. So that means that above this, I need to always put two blank lines that I'm previously was missing. So I added that. And here, after saying that, okay, you have put a new class line, but here you have added two more black lines, whether I can be happy with the one. So that is, I've been put there. Okay. And also it says the blank line has like a white space. Now if I run this, then the flicker will uh, flick it will show me that okay, what is the problem that is there? Then it says now reduce it to the number of issues, and it's only reporting one issue. W293 blank line contain white space. And it also says that which line is the line number 10, where it you know showing the issue that you can also see here okay okay now if i wanted to ignore this uh, thing how can i do that uh, let me check if i put a space if age no keep it i put that and then i come out here and i run this So then it particular that particular error has been you know ignored and there is no issue that been reported out of there. So that I can apply to a particular class, method, or line where I may have issue and I wanted to ignore that. Okay, that being done, the same thing as I did before is that we can go into the settings and we can enable this particular uh, rules. Uh, what is the different meters that we have? We can enable that. Now, also what I can do, right? I'm seeing this particular error, and this error has a certain code. I don't want it to have my code reported on this particular error. This error code is 4293. So how can I do that? So here, um, what I can do, 
the specific code I can take, the specific code is 293. So what I can put, I can put Python dot linting. Then I have like a bracket argument. So it is take the additional argument that is there. I have to always use comma before the last option. So here is what this argument is coming from. This argument is coming from, and then when you put, you can see the all the different you know values that are there that you can you know put out here. So then what is the code number I'm seeing here? I can let me try to put that. So I can put W293. Let's see. W293. Okay. I put that. And then I can go back to my class and I have removed the no QA part. Right. So now even if that particular error was there, now I enable to ignore that particular error or warning that has been reported. And let's see if I run the picker. I think Flickr is still going to be pointing to that particular error. It is not quite uh, removed, right? So that is, uh, you might put a Flick 8 argument, but it is not ignored. I put the ignore 293. So it is not, you know, including that. Anyhow, so that one. That it should ignore. So here we can use the switches. And here we put, we can see two ways I can do it. Uh, 298, then this. Okay. So I explicitly I say that W298, but. Continuously 293, I need to put, but it's continuously still putting that out here. Okay, so there is another option that I can choose to use this configuration. So these options are basically configuration files. So flake configuration files is comes as a flake eight. Okay, here you can you know choose the different options that you can see. You can put the flake eight first. Then you can you know put different options, and you can choose to ignore certain uh, files. Like for example, your PyCache, you want to ignore, you want to ignore, uh, you know, the, all the test cache, or you want to ignore the specific file. You want to ignore, uh, you want to include the files which are need to be you know analyzed. That you can put, and also you wanted to disable that user not to be using the no key way. So that you can also do. You can also increase the line that is there. So maximum line is 180. The maximum complexity you allow within a code that is that. And then you have this different error codes. But we have used the error codes, but still it is not being reported. So let us try one more time. So all I have to do is to uh, create a new file. In the same location, in the root location, and I can give it like a fake eight. Then I put fake eight as a configuration. Then I can type ignore. It can give auto complete. And I put W293 option. I can also, you know, comment this out for now because it's not taking up. So let's see whether it's actually reported anything or not okay so after putting this particular configuration right so it's uh but it's still reporting anyhow it's not gone away so another option on the flake 8 i can put it uh is as for the documentation they say which kind of errors you wanted to it to be report so these are the all the different errors are there if I wanted to ignore totally the error that I don't like, so that is the W I can remove from the list also. So I only have I wanted to see E F C. Let's see, does it make any changes or not? If it's not, then okay. Then I can try to run rerun this. Let's see whether it is successful or not. It's not that okay. But this are the way we can, you know, configure. Now it has been uh, picked up by the flake eight. 
it has been ignored right so it will look for the placate uh, configuration and when you run this automatically now it is picked up uh, even if it's not picked up on the settings arguments that we can pass for the visual studio visual studio is still reporting it but from the command line when i'm saying i want to be ignoring this then it is picked up so if i say i wanted to have this i wanted to still have the dog loop just i wanted to ignore the specific rule then let's see whether it does or not actually try to page and then whether it's reports or not let's just figure it out Okay, so if it is in the report, so I can individually uh, ignore certain rules and I can include the other rules so that I can configure using flick E. Similarly, I have like a configuration file that is PyLint RTC. Okay, that is for uh, another configuration file that you can add. Okay, so here you can, you know, exclude a list. So this is like a master list that you can see. And then you have like a different sections. You can have like a specific section for your messaging that you can you know control how much messages is displayed, okay. and which rules you wanted to disable related to styling of strings. And then uh, in the reporting part, you can say like how you're going to report, whether you're going to report in a text format, uh, whether it's not going to report, etc. And how the evaluation, the score that has been, uh, you know, created, right? That particular evaluation condition, etc. You can, you know, override that as well. Basic rules, uh, you can enable them as well, whichever you wanted to have that. And the function names, expression, you can give the what the function name should be. If you want to start with a z, then it has underscore. It will can also have like a z numeric then underscore in between two to thirty. At the end, that's what is the function name you want to allow. Similarly, variable name expressions, etc. You can control the naming convention with a minute level if you want to. And here, if you see, if you can have just like a flick it, uh, if you can see that which switch I can use to ignore a certain rules, okay. So let's see here if I have a certain goal ignore that is not there. Okay, so here they have mentioned like uh, we just need to look into the method documentation of this configuration and then they have like a specific uh I see anything have like a public method. Okay, so minimum public method, right? maximum public method so this rule i can use i can say that, okay the rule uh, is showing an error that i have a very minimum set of public method that has been given right so here in my class uh, i have one sum right and then uh, it is telling that i think yes it's telling that i have a very few public methods in my class okay so what i can do uh, here I can add additional file and I can name the file as a pylint rc. So let me add this file pylint rc. And in this file, I can you know put public method, minimum public method can be one. But it is not going to pick up uh, this particular setting out here. Again, you can do the pylint args. But let us try to do this. Uh, okay, it's it's name convention. It will start with dot. So let's try to rename it first. And then we try to run the pilot out here. So here we want to on this particular class we're going to get one error right from the pilot. Pilot, it is my class. Let's see whether it's reports. The only report error reporting. Okay. So it's reporting other things. Uh, but it is also file constraint, no section header. So we need to give a section header, pilot.rc. We cannot just put as it is. So we can put out here 
it's already a section header for this and the section header need to be given that is basically design okay here you can also control like what is the maximum number of argument you can say etc so let's put a section name just like here into the flake we have given section name like flake but here you can you know group them together into a different uh, sections where the particular rules is there so why this is fair because there is no section uh, name was mentioned so let's see uh, now we can you know run the file link and then we can see if there is showing any kind of errors to us okay so apart from the training white space there is no other error is mentioned now if we suddenly say that this required two or this required three and we save it and we again try to run this and then obviously that uh, default value will override it right so those are there another thing that we have seen right is another linting tool that you can use specifically for documentation that is known as pydoc style so uh, we just need to add that and then again for pydoc style we can enable that using the setting on vs code or we can also use the command line form so currently the pydoc style right pydoc style then i say my class dot v1 Now when I'm doing this, it says that all the different errors is pointing out. Now first line should be ending with a period, not s. Missing dog string that is missing in uh, int that is there. In the public method, no back line allowed after the function dog string. So that's not allowed. So I can you know remove that. No white space allowed surrounding the dog strings. Space that you can say first line should be ended with a period, not R, etc. So all these things have been defined. So let's see uh, under the settings, I have like a PyDoc style have been enabled. So let me you know turn this on. Okay, and I can see the in the ID itself after a certain time, the error related to the documentation string that going to be coming up. So here the error has been reported by it. So I can put this structure of X class. Okay. So then the corresponding again it's going to be when well save it, again it's going to be analyzed after a certain time. And I'm going to see the analyzation and I can see what is the particular data that is there. So first line should be uh, end with a period, not an S that is represented and the constructor, etc. So all of the things again, uh, you can you know try to ignore certain rules. Right here, you have the particular rules is there. D four hundred. Okay. So let's see if you can you know try to ignore that and let's see can you know enable that here. Right, I'm going to pick up on try for this line error most probably gone, but let's see. It will take some time to analyze, but it is not going to be right. The other rules are there. Anyhow, so these are the basically uh, way we can ensure that our codes are properly written in terms of documentation, in terms of normal coding convention and our style. Uh, any question, you guys have? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. So it is clear to you guys that how can you use the code tools? How can you, you know, integrate that with the Visual Studio code? How can you review the edits and how can, you know, try to proper clean code, right? Yes, sir. Over then. Let me stop the recording for now. Another thing you guys can also look into. Uh,